All right, good morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. Um, the topic is Google Ads for Beginners. Um, I will go through that. Um, just a little bit of housekeeping. Um, Sam Calderon from the Somerset County Business Partnership is online with us. Um, so she is there in case anybody's having any difficult technical difficulties, you can use the chat function to try to reach out to her and see if she can give you a suggestion to, uh, to solve that. I'm going to stay focused on the presentation, obviously, because I want to make sure everybody gets the information. Um, also, just want to remind everybody, the Somerset County Business Partnership, definitely you want to check the events calendar because the events section has a lot of great opportunities to learn some more information. Stuff is being added on a regular basis. So definitely check out scbp.org to uh, stay involved and make sure you're on the emailing list. So our topic today is Google Ads. Um, I, there is a lot to actually discuss, and I'm going to cram and condense it into a very small amount of time. <laughs> so we're going to keep very, very focused. I want to make sure that we're just talking about some very specific things, the basics that are going to get everybody started and hopefully give you a successful experience. So um, <clears throat> why should you listen to me? For those of you who know me, I've been around the business partnership for quite a few years. Uh, I am a business owner. I am a digital marketing consultant. I am a um, business counselor and instructor with the Small Business Development Center. Uh, I am w very well versed in digital marketing, having built websites for more than 20 years, having focused on search advertising, search optimization for at least 13, 14 years. Um, so I can talk about this stuff not only from theoretical and high level to very uh, very detail oriented. Um, so I don't mind sharing information, but you know, again, we're going to try to keep things focused today. So if you have questions, questions are great. We love that because it makes things interesting. But I got to say, please keep the questions focused to the topics we're going to talk about today because um, there's just not enough time. There's a lot to talk about and I want to keep things highly specific. Um, we're going to talk about a couple of repeatable steps for those of you who have never used Google Ads before. Um, I want to make sure that you understand the basics to get a campaign up and running yourself. And then hopefully that'll set you down a path for how you can go and continue to learn and make it more um, work better for you over time. We're not going to cover a number of related topics because within Google Ads, there are many different types of ads. We're going to focus on text ads. That's the ads that appear at the top of the search results. We're not going to talk about display, which is contextual. We're not talking about remarketing. We're not talking about shopping or YouTube or audiences or Facebook or Instagram um, and many other things related to that because we will just go down too many rabbit holes. And I want to make sure people understand the core concept, what we're here to talk about today. So let's think about search engines and how they work and what do people do your ideal customer the prospect is going to go to google and it could be using desktop laptop smartphone tablet doesn't matter but they're going to type something in they're going to type in some keyword phrase they're going to type in you know a statement a question something that's going to go and try to help them get a resolution to a pain or a problem um, this is where search advertising comes in because of many different types of results that can appear on the page but we want to make sure that we have an opportunity to get appear high up on the page. And that's where Google ads or paid search ads or cost per click ads, pay per click ads, the different variations on that. But that's basically the place you can try to get a presence high up on the screen. Um, there's many other places on the screen in a search result page, SERP, SERP. Um, you know, there's uh, like the local business listings where you might have, you know, two or three local businesses um, that appear with a map. You have organic search links. So that's all the SEO work that you might do to try to optimize pages of your website to show up somewhere on the page. But you notice how Google stacks things against you. Um, they give you the free stuff, the Google My Business listing, the natural or organic listings. Those things are further down the page. But if you really, really want to be at the top of the page, you got to pay. Um, but it, you only pay if somebody clicks on your ad. So that's the nice thing about it. You can run a campaign. It doesn't cost you anything to start running a campaign. But as soon as somebody clicks on your ad, that's when it's going to cost you a little bit of money. And that money is going to vary pretty dramatically depending on the keyword phrase you choose and you know the, the bid auction at that point in time. So what is this consumer journey we're thinking about here? The person who's trying to solve a problem, they're going to a device, they're typing some phrase, they're getting a search result in Google. That's our first column here. They're going to click on a link, presumably your ad at the top of the page, and they're going to come to a web page that you control and you created that specifically carries on whatever message it was. So if somebody typed in something about, you know, um, physical therapy for knee injury, if that was the keyword phrase, then the ad presumably talks about physical therapy for keyword phrase. The landing page should be about a physical therapy for keyword page or keyword uh, injury. And then 
your person can go and click and hopefully fill out a form, submit, or click to call and have a conversation with you. So that's ultimately what we want to do is to get somebody not only to click that ad, which is costing you money, land on your website, see that you have the background, the experience, the expertise, and then they will go and contact you by whatever means you direct them to. So Google Ads, by their own definition, is an online advertising program, and you can create ads to reach people exactly when they're interested in products and services that you offer. That sounds great. But you know, as I showed you a couple of slides earlier, there's actually many different types of Google Ads that you can run. We're going to just focus on a standard search campaign and creating a text ad in there, because that's the basics. And that's the type of ad that appears at the top of that search result example I just showed you. So the pros of this is you can get it started relatively quickly. Within a few hours, you're up and running. Um, doesn't cost much money to get it started. I mean, you don't nothing costs you anything until somebody clicks. Um, you have a variety of targeting options to go and try to help put that ad in front of the right ideal consumer. Um, you can quickly turn it off if you need to, you know, if you're going away for a week or whatever. Um, and then hopefully if you're doing things right, it's going to be a quick way for you to generate some leads, especially when you have downtime. Or if you're not appearing in the rest of the search result pages like that Google My Business listing or the organic links. Um, the cons is that, you know, it's not set and forget it. Honestly, you know, once you sort of get this started and you're learning how to go and uh, refine your campaign and be a good steward of the campaign, um, it takes time to learn the stuff, to look at the results, to try to f figure out what to make adjustments to, get it to work better, to fine tune it, to decide what to turn off, decide what to test. So it's not a set and forget it. You don't throw money at it and just assume that, you know, if you build it, they will come. You do have to go and do a little work. And if you don't put in proper safeguards, you can lose some money fairly quickly without getting any good results or at least get, getting good learnings. I mean, this is always about testing, right? So it's not, you know, you should never have that mindset that you run an ad once it didn't work and, it, and have, or it didn't work at that time and that it, therefore it doesn't work, period. You really have to sort of continuously try something different, refine it, adjust, experiment in order to see um, and truly validate your assumptions. So what do we need to prepare? Um, ideally, you need to know what services you're gonna offer. You know, most businesses have multiple services or maybe multiple products. Um, so you have to be prepared to sort of decide, okay, what are those different services? Do I have a different page to distinguish between each of those services that I plan to advertise? Because you don't send people to your homepage because your homepage now that people are confused, they have to decide what to click on. If I was searching for a physical therapist for a knee injury, I don't want to come to the physical therapy homepage because then I still have to go and like figure out through the navigation, do you do knee injuries? <laughs> What's involved in a knee injury, et cetera. So ideally you want to go and send a person directly to the landing page that talks about that topic to continue that consumer journey, what their expectation was. You set the expectation by maybe having that keyword phrase in your ad copy. And then when you get to a landing page, you want to continue that expectation that the, that, it, that landing page is relevant to what the person was searching on. Um, you want to choose some keyword phrases. So keyword phrases are what people drop into Google to go in and figure out um, you know, how to solve their pain or problem. And you need to write, write some text that's going to go into the ads. And I say ads because it's always ideally ideal to go and write an ad specific for each service you're offering and then have at least another version or two of that ad to go and test against each other. So that way, maybe the first ad isn't as effective as you think. It was, isn't as well written, but if you have two ads testing against each other, then you can figure out which one performs better over time. So when you think about your website, just make sure that your destination is up and running. You know, ideally the thing is you want to go and have a different a website with, it could be as many pages as you want, but ideally different pages for different services. So, you know, in the example today that I'm going to walk you through, you know, we're going to primarily assume it's an accountant just for ease. And because there's so many different types of services an accountant can actually provide. Um, so, you know, if I was looking for um, a bookkeeper, obviously individuals don't necessarily look for big bookkeepers, businesses do, right? So you have a business page about bookkeeping. And if I was writing an ad that's going to be triggered by some keyword phrase, I want to make sure they're going to the bookkeeping page because that's going to go and continue that consumer journey and make, make sense so people aren't hunting and pecking. Because the reality is after all these years of working on websites and looking at all these uh, web reports, um, the, the, what I, uh, my opinion is that based on all that data, a person who comes to a typical business to business website is going to look at maybe three pages. They're going to look at whatever page they landed on, which hopefully is a page that was specific to what they were searching for. If they like what they saw and you held their attention long enough, they'll probably look at like a testimonials page or reviews page to sort of see that you've done this for their peers. 
successfully. They may look at an about page to see that you have the credentials or licenses or whatever other uh, background to, to make you a subject expert. And then assuming those three pages are all great, they'll probably you know, click to contact, schedule an appointment, click to call, whatever your call to action mechanism is. So you know, people don't look at every page of your website. Sorry, that's not true. And the people are probably gonna spend less than three minutes on your website. That's the other constant that I see. So again, that's my experience of looking at hundreds of websites, um, but I think you know, that has worked pretty well as a practice. So what keyword phrases? do you think people are gonna search for? The thing is you wanna be careful about not using everything and not being too broad. So by broad, I mean, I wouldn't go and like run a campaign triggered on the word accountant because that could be mean many different things. But when you start niching down and taking more specific phrases, that gives you a better opportunity to appear in the ad uh, results at the top of the page. Because you have to remember, you have other competitors who are probably bidding on keyword phrases and trying to get there too. So it's not just you competing for space. So if you sort of try to go and target you know, niche phrases and have pages that support those topics, then you might have a better chance of getting higher, more consistent place and placement, getting better traffic. Um, you also wanna be careful about people who click that are not really, um, interested in hiring you, but are looking for something else. You know, people who are looking for do-it-yourself type of instructions. That might not necessarily be the best customer or best prospect that you want because it's costing you money if they click on your ad. Um, and that's not to say that that isn't a strategy, but for most people on a tight budget, you probably want the most likely relevant quality people to click on your ad. And by quality, I'm just sort of using that definition of like, you know, they're most, most likely to be hiring you of your service. So we don't want people who are looking for do-it-yourself type information. We don't want people who are looking for um, jobs or careers or training or salary information because that's going to be wrong. Try to pick phrases that make more sense to the service you're offering and in, used in the language of what a person is trying to solve a problem is using. The ads themselves, so text ads that I described, you know, if you look at the right-hand side here, they're pretty simple in nature, right? You know, they have a headline and a description. And technically the headline's broken up into two or possibly three. Um, Google continuously changes and tests and displays different uh, mixtures and maybe like shortened versions depending on the user's device. So if we were looking at a, say a desktop, we might see ads that look like this. If we were looking on a mobile device, it might be a little bit smaller, condensed and shortened. Um, the headlines are pretty straightforward headlines. You know, they're short and pithy. Uh, each headline is no more than 30 characters. We try to sort of load them in the order that we would prefer. Usually headline one and two is what's going to appear, but Google may test dropping or adding headline three. So we just give Google what it wants. And that's the thing you have to remember about all of this is give Google what they want. They want more information and then they will try to show it at the right time to the right person. And they may experiment based on their machine learnings and all these years of experience and all the expertise of the engineers that work behind the scenes on this stuff. They will go and try to go and serve your ads and tr try to get people to click because that's what makes Google money. Remember, Google's not your friend, but Google does have a lot of you know, machine intelligence behind the scenes that's gonna try to help improve the odds of your campaign working. The description area, is you know usually a couple of statements. Um, we can we you know work within a, a sort of character count. You know so there's usually like up to two lines of descriptions at 90 characters maximum on each. And by characters we're talking about you know real English letters, one single space between sentences. Use punctuation. Don't write you know stupid abbreviations that you would use in a text message. Use actually full spelled out words like a proper adult should, <laughs> and that will make a better experience for the person who's reading the ad. Um, we don't go and use excessive punctuation, you know, three exclamation points. I mean, stuff like that will actually trigger a warning in the system as you're trying to enter this stuff. So, you know, it's best not to do anything that's gonna trigger any kind of warnings or put your ad in any type of review process. Just keep things simple, write like an adult. Um, don't write in all uppercase, but you could do something like title case at the beginning of each word you know, like capital F, capital M, capital H, like in this first example here. Um, it's all about trying to go make your ad appear um, to stand out a little bit among the others, but make sure it's readable too, because obviously the more words you have, the, the little bit more difficult it is for somebody to read. People tend to scan and looking for a keyword phrase that they typed in. So if they don't see that, they may, you know, not click on the ad without reading the details. 
So very simple. We're, when we write our ads, we try to write plan ahead. So have some headlines, have some descriptions, I have a destination URL, and I'm going to show you how to do all this in Google Ads. I've put it in there. The ad copy itself, you know, the thing is you want to have like a clear description of benefits and you know what is your call to action and if there's any offer or incentives. But always think about this, you know, people as business owners, we tend to always think about the features, but in marketing, you really need to think about the benefits, right? A person's going to buy on emotional benefits. Is it going to solve their problems? Is it going to solve their pain? Is it going to reduce time that they're wasting? Is it going to save the money? So always try to go and write from a benefit perspective, whether it's your website or you know the ad copy, and you know just use common sense language. So let's go ahead and create your first campaign in Google Ads. And again, remember, if you have questions, you can put them in the questions pane. Um, we'll take all the questions for, uh, you know, close to the end after we get through this. So we're going to go, for the first time user, you're going to go to ads.google.com. I want to warn you, though, there's actually two versions of Google Ads. Um, there's an older version or a, a dumbed down version called Google Ads Express. They might still call it Google AdWords Express. Be very careful. Do not sign up for Google Ads Express. Um, that is a dumbed down version. It is not very good. I have never met a person who's come through business counseling or anything else <laughs> that has had a good experience with it. And it was basically, you know, Google really realized that their Google Ads platform is a complicated thing to get started and run successfully. So they created this dumbed down version, put it out in the market place a number of years ago, try to incentivize people to get started right away. And people have frustrating experiences because they don't have much control and they don't get good results and the data just, you know, it, it just ends up spending money without any results. And then they go around bad mouthing Google Ads saying, Google Ads sucks. Um, well, the truth is it's that Express platform is really what is lacking. Use the full featured one. So when you go to Google, I'm sorry, ads.google.com, you should ideally be shown the proper version, uh, the full featured version. And that's the one you want to sign up for. Um, you could use your existing Gmail account. You know, presumably you have one. Uh, if you don't, you know, it's worth getting one, especially for business, because you can link all your other um, Google services, free and paid, together through that. You know, Google Analytics, uh, Google My Business, Google Search Console. It goes on and on and on. All these things that you might tie together. So it's worth using the same Gmail account to link those things. Um, when you're in there. You're going to have, uh, they're probably going to present you with a little wizard to follow step by step to creating your first campaign. And that's okay. Go ahead and do that. Um, take the learnings that we're going to, you know, I'm going to show you in a few moments and just, you know, sort of put your variation on that in there. Nothing's going to go live until you actually go and put in a credit card. If they're pestering you for your credit card, just hit the little X to make that message go away. You don't have to go live to the world until you are absolutely ready for it. So let's see. Oops. <clears throat> So I'm changing my screen. Everybody should be able to see this. This is a Google Ads dashboard. It's an existing account I created just to sort of save some steps so we wouldn't have to waste time here. But um, they basically, you know, once you get in, this is what it's going to look like. Uh, I'll just take you through a quick explanation of what all this is. So at the top here on the left-hand side, you're going to have two columns of navigation. And this is as you create campaigns and have, um, you can have one campaign, you can have multiple campaigns. Within each campaign, you have what are called ad groups, which go and represent different uh, things that you want to be testing or driving traffic for. I know it sounds complicated. It'll make sense in a few moments. But just, you know, this left-hand navigation is where we're sort of managing the primary aspects of a campaign and what you're setting up, the keywords, the ads, et cetera. As you begin to create a campaign and fill in more details, you're going to have a lot more contextually relevant navigation options appear here. On the right-hand side, you have um, some basics. You know, basically, to get started with anything that you need, you know, tools uh, and settings is where you're going to find stuff like, you know, how to make sure your credit card information is in there properly. If you have to go and link anything, like linking to a Google Analytics account, if you want to change notification preferences, all this kind of stuff is in here. You know, I definitely encourage you to go and explore this on your own. And then over time, as you're beginning to become a little bit more um, you know, comfortable and thoughtful and trying to think about what you can do next. That's where you're going to sort of explain, ex exploring the planning, the shared library, the bulk, bulk actions and measurement tools. I and mean, that's where all that great stuff is. You will also get notifications. So, you know, it might say something up here, like, you know, you'll have like a little red exclamation point saying there's something you should need to be looking at. Um, or you might have some banner across the top warning you about something. Um, just 
do what's logical, follow whatever the instruction says or, or hide it if you don't want to see it anymore. And if you need help, there is help section built into this, or you could just go to Google and type into Google what it is you're trying to accomplish. So let's plan on a campaign, setting up our first campaign. So in here, um, we're going to set up our first campaign. See this big new button? I'm going to click new. Now it's going to give us a couple of questions. What do you want to do? Do you want to do sales? Do you want to create leads, website traffic? So in our example, where we're going to use an accountant, an accountant website, maybe we're going to use like a tax audit accountant or a tax audit representation, something like that. So we want leads, right? We want people to come to our website, find us, find, you know, they're typing in some relevant phrase, they're seeing an ad, they're going to click on that ad, they're going to come to a landing page, it's relevant. So I want to go and create a campaign where we're generating leads. And don't worry about this too much or don't overthink it. I mean, this is really sort of designed, this little wizard is designed to sort of help guide you through some steps because they realize there's a lot of decisions and you might not know what you want. The next thing is what kind of campaign type? We want a search campaign, so, right? That's what's gonna put those ads right at the top of the search results um, to link to our website. What to uh, select the ways you want to reach your goal. What's also nice I didn't mention yet is there's this little question mark you might see next to different statements. If you're not sure what to click on, always just mouse over it. You'll see there's a little contextual help that'll sort of pop up and explain what it is you're looking at. Try to give you some options or maybe a link to something else. But in this case, I'm going to say website visits. And, um, you know, I'm going to use a... Uh, I'm going to use just my own business website since, since I don't have a client to specifically drive to here. So again, I chose leads. I chose search campaign type. I chose um, you know website visits, and I'm going to web drive them to my website. And I'm going to click continue. Conversions, I'll talk about that a little bit later. So let's click continue. Now, I can give this campaign a name. Um, I could call it anything I want. I could say, you know, spring 2020. I could say search only, whatever, doesn't matter. You name whatever you want and you can always change it again in the future to this as you begin to add more campaigns and structure and organize it for yourself. Um, networks, so this is important. Do not include the display network in what we're doing right here. Right now, we just want an ad to appear at the top of the search results. That's what I can control. That's what I want to specifically see. In the future, you can always go and explore this, but right now, um, it's just not uh, what we want to do. Just pick as a best practice, just pick one and stick with that. Next place, target, target locations. Oh, I'm sorry, you know, let me show you a couple of things. Um, sometimes you'll see things are hidden by default. You know, you can set up a, a start and an end date. So like if this is a special promotion that's going to end on say May 31st or, or you know, July 5th, um, you can put an end date in there so that way you don't have to worry about coming in and turning this off in the future or letting it run too long and spending money unnecessarily. Um, the other parts here you can leave alone for now. They're really not relevant at the moment. Targeting, so by default, they're sh trying to target all of the US. Well, that's not appropriate if you are an accountant that really just wants to focus face-to-face -face with people in a local area, right? So you need to go and make some adjustments there. So I want to go and pick something very specific. So I clicked on advanced search and maybe I'm just gonna go and say, I want, I don't know, let's say Bridgewater, New Jersey. That's my target and um, I want to say 15 mile radius of Bridgewater, New Jersey. And the reason why I do that is because it's basically 15 miles as a crow flies. Anyone who's within this area and typing a phrase like tax audit accountant should hopefully see my ad. Anybody who's outside of the area but types in something like tax audit accountant in Bridgewater, New Jersey or tax audit accountant in 08807, they would see the ad. So I'm sorry, trying to go and make sure that by default, people who are within see it. And if somebody outside of this area is specifically typing that in, wants to know about somebody in that area, like they could be somebody who's working in New York City, but you know they live in Bridgewater, fine. That's how they're gonna go and solve that. Um, and I could click save, that could be great. Or I could go and maybe make some changes to this. And you know, maybe I wanna go and do something like just make target by county, summer, Set County, New Jersey, Target, uh, Hunterdon County, Target. So what this is actually doing is if I remove this first one, the Bridgewater one, and I'm just targeting by county, 
I can do that as well. I could target just by town names if I want. So if like, for example, for franchise owners, if you have a specific territory and you don't want to be advertising outside using like some radius, you could go and target by the specific counties, counties that you are licensed to fr as a franchisee to work within. Or you could go and buy town names. I mean, there's a lot of different options. Or you could do the entire state of New Jersey if you want. Similarly, you could exclude something. So for example, if uh, you know going to Trenton is way too far for me, um, you know, I could go and type exclude. And, you know, in that way, you know, even if somebody's in Trenton, but they live in Bridgewater and they're typing it in or whatever, you know, whatever that is, you know, it's like, or, you know, say, let's do something like Hillsborough. So uh, that's probably a better one. Hillsborough Township, New Jersey. Let's exclude that one since it's closer. Um, so as you can see here, I was able to go and like target the counties that I want, but I can go and exclude a specific area that I want if you have the just reason for that. Similarly, like if you were closer to the border here and you didn't want to go and spend the $14 to cross the bridge toll to the Staten Island, you could go and exclude Staten Island and make sure you're covering everything else that's around here. So you have options. It's up to you to decide what you want to do. Languages. Um, by default, English. That makes sense. I would just leave English unless you have some reason otherwise. Audiences. This is a lot more complicated. We're not going to cover that today. Um, average you want to spend per day. This is what's challenging. You don't spend a dollar a day. You really need to put some kind of minimum number in here that's going to make sense to at least hopefully generate some impressions. Because you don't know yet if your competition is using similar keyword phrases and how expensive those keyword phrases might be. Bidding on keyword phrases can vary dramatically. It could be like 75 cents a click. It could be $2.50 a click. It could be $18 a click. There are some categories that are just ridiculously, insanely expensive, especially in the legal area, in automobile industry, um, financial industry. There are a lot of crazy bid prices. Um, and they're going to be different. You know, one phrase that you have might be a lot cheaper than another. And that's why we try to go and look for niche phrases, not those common ones that everybody's using. Um, so I would say for a minimum, you should probably go and say 10 or $15 a day, at least in the beginning to get started. Um, you know, ideally, if I had a budget, I'd probably spend, the, you know, 50 to $100 a day to get some learnings. So I can quickly sort of figure out what's working what's getting good impressions, what's getting good clicks, but it's going to be up to you. So you have to decide an amount. And you also have to remember, Google will actually go and spend up to twice that much if they feel like it. <laughs> so that's kind of the warning there. It's like, you know, you may be trying to work yourself into a budget, but Google has the authority to go and spend up to twice as much um, if they feel like it, if they think, according to their machine learning, that they're going to go and be able to generate the traffic for you. So, you know, pick a number that's safe for you. 10 to 15 on the low end is probably you know, where you want to start before you figure out, out something else. Um, what do you want to focus on? So there's a number of things and options you can focus on in terms of bidding. Um, I would say just start with clicks for now. And you might want to define just to sort of manage your budget and maximum cost per click. I'm going to say something like $5. Um, that sounds like a lot, but the real reality is if you start with a number that's too low, you may not be generating any impressions for some keyword phrases. So we're going to say by default, any of the keyword phrases I'm bidding on, I want a minimum of, or a maximum $5 cost per click. I'm not willing to spend more than $15 a day, ideally. Um, and this just puts some protections into your account so it's not running away wildly, incurring costs and getting you frustrated and angry that you spent a lot of money and didn't get any results. Some other options here are what they call ad extensions. And these are excellent. Uh, I don't want to go into that right now because I think we're going to run out of time. But ad extensions is something you definitely want to look at. There's like call out extensions, which are very short statements. You can have three or four statements that um, are, surround your ad. Site link extensions could be like three or four additional clickable links other than whatever the primary link is for your ad. Location extension, if you have a Google My Business listing. You can go and tie that in together. So the address of your physical business that shows up in the Google My Business listing could also be shown with your ad. Call extension, you can have a phone number appear with your ad. So you know, if somebody's viewing on a mobile device, they can go in and use click the call function right there. So lots of great opportunities, definitely worth exploring. I'm sorry, we just can't get through that because we had a lot to get through before the end of the call today. So next thing now to show, if you notice in the progress bar, we have to set up an ad group. So the campaign, we called it search. The ad group, let's call it, you know, tax audit representation. Maybe that's our to topic for this 
particular ad group. And you can have as many ad groups as you want. You can have as many campaigns as you want, but you want to try to make things just, you know, reasonable and descriptive for yourself. Representation. So what do we want to put here? It says paste keyword phrases, one keyword or phrase per line. And this is where we want to be careful. We want to go and choose. If you remember that slide I showed earlier, we want to pick some phrase that we think that somebody, somebody's going to type into the search results. And hopefully it's not something that's looking for a job or do it yourself type of thing. Um, maybe tax audit CPA, maybe uh, tax audit um, spelled out certified public accountant, maybe um, IRS tax audit accountant. So I'm just copying and pasting from a list I have here. Now, this is where you want to be careful and where people get into trouble because there's this little command right here where there's a little instruction that says match types, control, and trigger how your ads appear. By default, if I was just typing these phrases in here like this, um, your ad is going to appear many places to many different people, and it may not necessarily be the right way that you want it. What I recommend is everybody puts these little double quotes, one at the beginning and one at the end of each line. What that does, it changes this into what they're calling keyword phrase match type. And what that's going to do, it's going to help control how often your ad is going to be triggered. Um, so only if somebody is typing in these phrases and maybe you know if the phrases are juxtaposed a little bit like you know instead of tax audit accountant accountant uh tax audit um you know so, so you know things could be juxtaposed a little bit there could be some leading question or statement before or after it but this is sort of mand mandating that this needs to be part of what's triggering the ad and you know there is a great section in google ads um, in their help section that goes and explains this whole thing to you. But to give you just some examples, like, you know, if I was, if I was using something else, like more specific, like, you know, putting these hard brackets uh, around each keyword phrase, then it's supposed to be sort of an exact match type. Um, you know, if I use a plus sign, then I could be going and creating even greater um, uh, variations on this. But this is a really, really advanced topic. And there are very specific reasons why in certain campaigns, I'll use the plus for broad match modified, or I might be using the hard brackets for exact match. But for most of the time, and for, especially for beginners, the best thing to do is just do this example here, just put the double quotes at the beginning of the end, only choose a few keyword phrases to get started, and you'll be great. It'll work well for you, trust me, you can always come back and test more variations. And after you study up on match types, you can learn more about that. So we entered a keyword phrase for this ad group. We chose just four and you can create five, 10 keywords, whatever you want, but we're just starting simple right now. Uh, now we have to go and put in some information for the ad itself. So I'm gonna go and use here an example. Uh, I'm just gonna copy some stuff from, from a little scratch pad I got here just for purposes of getting this started. So our final URL, you know, whatever this landing page is that's gonna go and have this information, I'm gonna put that there. Headline one, I got up to 30 characters. I'm gonna go and like give it something like this. So I'm expecting people to be typing in tax auto representation or some variation on that. I wanna make sure that it's appearing in the headline. So people are knowing they're seeing uh, and getting what they wanted, right? You're seeing this as we build this right over here on the side. IRS tax auto representation can help right now. You can see that. You can see the character counts that if you're gonna go and run over the number of characters, it'll flag you and warn you that you've, you've gone too far. Um, gonna put in optional third headline. Uh, you can do it if you want, if you don't. Um, sometimes it might get truncated off. Sometimes it will be maybe reordered. Um, you know, it all depends on how Google's messing around with their experiments. A description. I'm going to jump right down here in description. So maybe we'll put this in there. So now if I look at this, I have an ad that looks pretty decent, right? I got um, the headline that's representing, you know, or including whatever keyword phrases a person might have typed in. So they recognize that. So they know they're looking at the right thing. Get expert help now, tax specialists. So those are kind of reinforcing, you know, uh, recognizing what the concern is, received a tax audit, avoid stress, you know, benefits, benefits here, avoid stress, costly mistakes, get expert representation, protect your rights. I mean, those are all kind of benefit points. Request a free consultation. And you can see what this might look like on mobile. So sometimes on a smaller screen, you might want to make some adjustments to make sure that this thing looks intelligent on a small screen as opposed to how 
where you have more real estate on a bigger screen. If you're happy with that, great. Save and continue or click done and create another ad. So we should always create two variations, but in the interest of time, I'm just gonna sort of just create one for the moment. And now look, current guide relations. So your campaign is done. Um, it just reiterates what I decided to do. So I kept a very limited target. You know, that was that radius, 15 mile radius of Bridgewater, um, $15 a day maximum. I'm maximizing clicks. So you know, right now, since we're in a learning mode, we want to go and try to get people to go and, and click on our ads. Um, and I'm, you know, I remember I said that like $5 a day, I'm sorry, $5 maximum click is what I wanted to purchase. So um, here, now you can see our dashboard looks a little bit more filled out. We can see our first campaign that I called search only. We see our first ad group in here, which is called tax auto representation. Nice boring title. Um, if I want to go and click here, in the second column, I can see what are the ads I wrote. So if I want to create another ad, I can do that immediately, typing in text, clicking on text, and you know maybe making some variation on this. You can create a responsive text ad, which is actually where you're feeding a couple different variations of headlines and descriptions in. And then Google will use their machine learning to go and try to serve that up in different scenarios to people. So that becomes interesting too, right? So they're going and taking advantage of um, you know, their sophistication to go and try to create different variations of your ad to see what works better. You know, maybe headline two in the first position actually works better to get people to click on that. Um, or, you know, swapping out different headlines, you know, if you feed them like a number of different headlines, a number of different descriptions, depending on how they're mixing it up. And, you know, you're generating a better ad that performs better than the, the standard ones you created. Again, there's scenarios where you want, might want to test that or, or if you just want to stick to very specific carefully worded constructed ads because if you especially if you're in any kind of industry that's regulated and you're worried about disclosure and disclaimers um, you might want to just keep things very fixed and simple but if you're willing to experiment the responsive ads can work very well on your behalf uh, the extensions so the extensions are all those different things i was describing before call ex call out extensions site link extensions um, location extensions these are standard things you might want to consider putting in there um, i'll include a link in the documents that goes and shows how to go and learn all about those, but definitely worth doing. Um, your keywords. So the keyword phrases that we typed in, notice they all have that double quote because they're phrase match. Um, it's interesting, you begin to get some feedback from the system saying, you know, what phrases are eligible or what might be low search volume. And that's fair because some things might be a little obscure and they may not be searched on that frequently, but you know, you want to get this kind of feedback in there just to see um, and help you with you know, planning. Something else you wanna consider is negative keywords. So you can add these things, negative keywords, and you usually try to do this at the campaign level. Um, let me see if I can do that right there. So campaign level, negative keywords, and what would I do as a negative keyword? I wanna go and put in things like free. You know, I don't want anybody who's searching on free tax auto representation or DIY tax auto representation or salary or job, or jobs, career, careers. Um, um, yeah, and you know, and that's the interesting thing because, like, with Google, they will go and you know, you, you when the keyword phrases you, you choose, you don't have to worry about being very singular and plural about the keywords that you want to bid on. But when it comes to the negative keywords, I've discovered that it is a good idea to go and be singular and plural about some of these things, just to sort of load these things in here and make sure that you're being very explicit. And over time, you can come back and add more of these. And the idea here again is that if somebody typed in tax auto representation jobs, my ad should never appear there, even if the person was in Bridgewater and doing whatever you know, that qualifies. So this is gonna be another way of saving you money and getting you higher quality traffic to your website. Somebody, you know, the wrong person who's not interested in hiring you is not going to see your ad, hopefully, and therefore they're not gonna click on it, it's not gonna cost you money. Uh, let's see, in settings, if you ever need to go back and make adjustments, like if you wanted to change a campaign name, you can easily do that here. Or if you wanted to go and you know change like your targeting, you can go back and come here and like make it all of Somerset County, Huntington County, or exclusions, whatever you want. If you wanted to change your budgets, change your ad strategy, put in an end date, all of that's available here. So what's the next step? After you got your ad, group, your first campaign and your first ad group, and you get your first ad in there, I definitely, would say create a different ad. So just, oops, not loading. A different variation on that ad, so you have a couple of them in there. And then you can go ahead and create another ad group. So, you know, we did this, maybe it's the first business book, that's appropriate for that. So let me jump back to where we were. 
So I know that's a lot, but if you follow those steps, and this video will be available um, afterwards. Uh, there's no handout to download, but the video will be made available. Um, but you know what you want to do is to create that campaign or create create your you know create your Google Ads account, create a campaign, put an ad group in there, experiment with typing in you know the URL and the headlines and the descriptions. Make maybe two versions of that within an ad group. Maybe keep it to no more than five to ten keyword phrases that are wrapped in a double quote for phrase match type. And then, you know, put that in there and maybe add a second ad group so you can test a different service you offer and do the exact same thing. And maybe a third ad group with the services and then put it live, um, you know, pay with the credit card, wherever it's asking you for that. And that way it goes live within half a day or so. It's usually reviewed and approved. Usually it's an automated process. Sometimes if something flags it, they'll have to have a manual human reviewer. Uh, but most of the time, if you did everything right, you can get through pretty quick. The important thing also is to, you know, before you go and explore certain categories that may not be acceptable to advertise, like, you know, fireworks, gun, gambling, um, you know, online pharmacies, uh, the cannabis related, there's a lot of topics that are not permitted. So you want to go and go and search Google for their, you know, um, approved ad, ad formats uh, before you spend a lot of time in, in this platform or any other platform. But once you get that up and running as, and, you know, you come back and you check it every day, see, if you're getting some impressions, so an impression is every time your ad is displayed, presumably to a user, a click is like every time a person has clicked on your ad. And then, you know, you're going to be getting a cost per click, an average cost per click, and then the count is going to be tallying up how much money you're spending. And you need to sort of look at this on a regular basis go back, look at the keywords that are triggering those clicks, see if one particular keyword phrase is doing better than others, see if you can go and maybe um, you're getting some feedback in the system that's telling you you're not spending enough money or you need to need to make some adjustment or it's a low volume search after you know certain like 90 days and nobody's clicking it or you're not generating any impressions not generating clicks and just turns things off um, another important thing that you know this is something you have to learn how to do on your own because it goes oops depending on how you built your website you want to go and set up some kind of conversion tracking so conversion tracking is a way of getting an extra piece of data into your google ads campaign of like okay you your ad appeared, that was an impression. Somebody clicked on it, that was a click. And now once somebody landed on your website, did they actually go and take whatever step and filled out a contact form? That would be a goal completion. So you need to go and set that up and how you do that is going to be very specific to whatever your website is built with. You know, If you're using WordPress, there are different ways to set that up. If you're using Square, uh, Wix, Weebly, anything else, there are many different ways of doing this. You might have to get your web developer involved um, because you might have to go and insert some tracking code on your website. So you have to go and figure this out. I'm sorry, I don't have that answer for you specifically because it's just too many different variations. Um, let's see. So I think just a recap, and then we're going to go and dive into questions and stuff. Um, you're going to create a campaign, you're going to create an ad group, you're going to put in at least two ads, you're going to choose some keyword phrases, you choose the right match type, you choose your geographic area carefully, you put in negative keywords if you can, set a daily budget, set a realistic daily budget, <laughs> um, make sure your website is functioning and it looks good on a small screen. That's super critical that, you know, if you have a contact form on a small screen, you expect people to be typing in with big thumbs, make sure that that actually works, test it out to make sure you're actually getting those notification emails because contact forms on websites are notorious this for failing and not sending messages <laughs> and then you never know and you're getting frustrated um, and you know when you have your ad campaign up for the first couple of weeks look in every day I'm not saying every hour but like definitely check in every day and see what's happening and try to interpret those results um, I'm sorry I can't show you any real results here right now because client campaigns are confidential so I don't really have any data I can go and display here but you know the idea is you have to go and look for it um, if you're not sure what to do you can hire a professional the Chamber of Commerce has many professionals in there you can go on like you know different uh, uh, freelancer platforms guru upwork etc ask a friend or business colleague um, the Somerset County Business Partnership has great resources um, the uh, Small Business Development Center at Raritan Valley Community College. I'm a digital marketing consultant there, so you can request free business counseling with me through the SBDC. Um, you can go to Google, <laughs> type something into Google, you'll find lots of great answers there as well. So with that said, I'm going to just stop for a second, go look at the, per, uh, the questions panel and figure out what we can answer real quick. Let's see. Oh, okay, so here's an interesting question from Barbara. 
She asks, should you respond or answer the calls that say your ads on Google are not optimized? Oh my God, those are the worst, aren't they? Isn't it nothing more frustrating? Because now we're all afraid of picking up our phones. And whenever our phone rings, we don't know if it's going to be an idiot on the other end trying to sell us something. Um, and that's the, that's, the, that's the frustrating part, right? It's just always not knowing, should we do this or not? And actually, I teach a class on that. <laughs> but no, the answer is no. It's a scam. Um, when people call you, like typically, now here's the funny thing. Sometimes a real representative of Google will call you. Majority of the time, it is, a, it is not a real person calling you. It is someone who is just trying to go and pretend they're calling you. They're going to warn you that, oh, my God, you're, you're blah, 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 blah. Um, the, so I would say, as with any solicitation, an inbound solicitation you receive, you should always scrutinize it and don't necessarily believe it. If you have a Google Ads campaign, as soon as you've created that Google Ads campaign and the campaign account has been active for a few days or weeks, you may actually get an email from Google, from a person who says, hey, I'm your account representative. I'd like to go and talk to you about it. You have no obligation to talk to them. Sometimes you will actually get a phone call that sort of back, follows up on the same thing. Hi, I'm blah, blah, blah from Google. And sometimes that's real. But again, I would not trust any inbound phone call that you receive because likely chances are it's not real. So thank you, Barbara. That's a great public service announcement. Appreciate you asking that. Uh, again, another question from Barbara. Does it cost additional to add extensions? No, the ad extensions are free. So that was that uh, call out extension, site link extension, um, call extension, um, structured snippet extension. All of those are free, and they just add more to the real estate of what what your uh, what might appear on the on the page. Let's see. Can, uh, again, another question from Barbara. Can you set a lower budget if you think your service is very specific and less searched? Okay, so here's the problem. Yeah. Okay, um, you want to generate impressions quickly on early on in your campaign. Otherwise, you don't know if anything's working. So I think it's safe not to go any less than 10, but you know, $10 as a maximum budget per day if you're truly on a budget. Um, if you set it to like $3 a day, $4 a day, you might just never get any clicks whatsoever. But until you get some learnings back, until the system has had a chance to run your ads against competitors, try to generate some impressions, um, you're never going to know. So you really have to sort of start with something and then you can always adjust things down in the future. Um, there's a question from Chris. I am a portrait slash wedding slash commercial photographer. Currently my website has three tabs for all. Should I have a separate website for each type of photography? Um, I would say create a separate website only if you want to increase your your pain <laughs> and your expenses. So you know that's that's always a challenge. We've always had that that issue, and we I mean collectively, um, and also working in ad agencies for for two decades. Um, there's always the question about can you just drive everything to one website or should you create multiple micro sites? Uh, my recommendation is try to keep things for your sanity, keep it all self-contained, because um, it's one a lot easier to maintain. It's less cost effect, uh, costly. It is easier and more efficient. And it is okay to go and demonstrate that you have different skills, but you want to drive people to the page that's relevant. Uh, if someone who's looking for a wedding photographer or a wedding videographer is not going to want to see your, you know, pet portrait photos. Um, I mean, that's not the primary thing. You don't want to drive them to the homepage to go and have to sort of navigate and figure that out. So yes, if you're promoting your wedding uh, photography services, drive them to the wedding photography section of your website. It doesn't have to be a separate website. That's completely up to you. Uh, thank you for your question. Uh, this is Ryan. Do you have any webinars that cover Google Ad Grants for nonprofits? Uh, no, Google Ad Grants is, um, is excellent just for everybody to understand. So basically Google does make a, a version of this available to nonprofit organizations. So you have to prove that you're a 501c3. You have to submit the submitting the, the documentation to prove that. Um, you can also request like Google G Suite for nonprofits. It's very, very much similar to like Google G Suite for um, education. Um, so again, if you sort of go through the process to go and prove that your organization is what you say you are, then you get free access to these tools like Google G Suite, um, and, uh, Google Ads, YouTube. Um, and then 
what the benefit here is that they're giving you an ad grant as well. So they're giving you uh, a budget of like, up, I think it's like up to $300 a day for a year. And I've set up like probably a dozen of these over the years. Um, last one was maybe about a year and a half ago. So my mind's a little fussy on it. Um, but, you know, you have to go through the process to go and apply. You have to uh, submit the proper documentation. You have to um, also go and set up a trial campaign to sort of show that you know what you're doing. Not that you're just sort of messing around. So the things I showed you today actually would work. Um, there are some right criteria, like you, in order to maintain the grant, you have to sort of have a 5% click-through rate, I believe, and you have to use um, CTA uh, type of bidding. So it's just a different bid type that's in there. But, you know, basically you have to follow the rules. And, you know, if you go to google.com slash, I think it's like nonprofits, um, you'll be able to go and and see all the details and requirements and follow the steps. Um, so your campaign will not be up and running in a day, but it may take you know a week or it could take two weeks, depending on if you how fast you submit stuff, how fast they return and respond to you, and then how fast you you know fix whatever questions or concerns that they had and resubmit, and then they review again until they finally approve. So I hope that helps. Thank you, Ryan. Another question from Chris: How do I drive an ad for? baby photos to a specific part of my website. Well, the destination URL in that ad is going to go to that, web, that particular page of your website. So if you look at this example here, you know, when I edited this, let's go back into editing. I had to paste in here the web page for this particular ad that appears in this particular ad group. So ideally, this should be the specific page that you want baby photos, if that's the keyword phrase. Now, you want to be careful about using baby photos as a keyword phrase because that could generate a lot of irrelevant traffic, just people who are just Googling for baby photos to slap on social media or whatever. So, you know, you might, well, you might want to be using a more careful keyword phrase like, you know, baby photographer, baby portrait photographer. Um, something like that and then your ad copy is all going to be like driving to whatever page of your website that's about baby photos or baby photography and then you can work from there so good question thank you uh question from cordell do you have an opinion on the percentage of ad budget we should allocate for google ads versus facebook slash instagram uh no well and here's the thing it's going to be completely up to you and i know that sounds a little <laughs> vague but but here's the thing they're completely different platforms and user intent. Google Ads is the first thing I will always recommend because it is where someone is going to solve a problem. No one is going to Facebook or Instagram to solve a problem, right? I mean, even if they go to Facebook to go and try to ask their friends, hey, do you have an account near me? That's not necessarily the right thing we're looking for, right? We want somebody, you know, and Google dominates nine, over 90% of the US search traffic. So we know that people go to Google before they go to Bing. So if they go to Google and they're typing a keyword phrase for that, then I want to appear at the top of the search results if I can. Facebook and Instagram, they definitely have value and you can certainly go and show ads to people in users in those platforms. And the thing there is you have greater targeting than you do on Google ads. So Google ads are pretty, pretty much limited to the keyword phrase that triggers your ad, um, geographic information. And you know maybe time of day and how much you want to spend and negative keywords. So we can use those things to try to craft how and when and to whom our ad is appearing. But on Facebook and Instagram, what's fantastic is everybody volunteers all their personal information to these platforms. You know, it's it's not only your your name, your age, your gender, your your sexual orientation, your political stance, whether you're in a relationship or not, how much education you have. You know, and then they match that data up with, you know, household income data, motor vehicle data, all this other kind of data stuff. So, you know, Facebook, Facebook knows a tremendous amount about individuals. So when you go and run a Facebook ad campaign or an Instagram ad campaign, you can do a great deal of targeting, try to put, and use their machine learning to try to put you in front of an ideal type of customer who might be a fit for your business. And, you know, also, you know, create audiences of similar or lookalikes. So, yeah, there's, there's no, I'm not going to say there's a, proper percentage of what you should devote to what. It's really about where you think your audience is and you have to test both. You really ideally should test both. And if you're going to test Google ads, you know, you spend some time getting good at running a Google ads campaign, then you should go and try Bing ads. So Bing is, you know, much smaller 
percentage of U.S. search pie. Um, you're probably talking about like 5% at this point. Um, but they have the exact same platform as Google Ads. You can import your campaigns from Google Ads into Bing Ads, and it's a lot less expensive. It's the, the cost per click is a lot lower. So definitely worth experimenting with. So thank you for your question, Cordell. And I would say, you know, if that's it, if no one has any other questions, you know, we're at the top of the hour. Um, again, you know, resources out there if you need it. You know, Google is your best friend for searching and try to finance this because there's a ton of stuff out there. Otherwise, you know, as I mentioned earlier, there are local resources. Um, again, Small Business Development Center is an amazing resource. Again, no cost business counseling. You should check them out. Um, check out, you know, members of some of the kind of business partnership. Uh, the library system has great books you can go and check out. You know, I guess in this, you know, since we're in the quarantine, there may be uh, digital downloads of stuff. And you know, I'm also available too. <laughs> so, if uh, if that's everything, I will say. Oh, and Barbara, thank you. Barbara says thanks. It was a lot of info. I feel confident to go try my hand on it. Most beneficial webinar I've attended. That made my day. Thank you so much. I uh, appreciate that. And everyone, please uh, be safe. Help someone if you can. And uh, that's it. Bye.